So this is a bit of 3 by 2 stock of cedar and we are going to break this down into four parts to make the floor and put a bit of rebate a rebate on two sides and yeah so let's get it broke down in, into its components so here we have the components for the floor so we have two side rails two side rails like so we're going to take a rebate out of them then we have a front cross member actually turn that that way and back cross member like so okay then we will have a spacer bit for back here which will go in there nicely just to block off the back and our door which has yet to be cut in that and that will be the floor so I'll bring these in see how we cut a rebate in this in these two and then we get it together now my rebate is an inch wide and seven eighths of an inch deep the inch is not so important it just leaves <coughs> the right amount for the brew box to sit on so we don't have any lips or anything in there but the seven eighths of an inch is a critical measurement because if it's any bigger the bees will build comb in the extra space and so we just wanted to try and keep it around the seven eighths you can go to three quarters i have some of them are three quarters but nothing bigger because the bigger the space bees don't like it and they will just fill it up with comb and you'll have heartache then trying to get frames out so So <clears throat> that's the rebate started and because my depth control doesn't go deep enough we are going to have to go freehand. I have a line drawn along here.
that's the rebate. That's where the floor will sit. And one of them on each side of the hive. So I'll get the other one done and then we'll get it together. So this is our floor. I went ahead and put it together. Um, I just screwed it together. Two screws in each corner. It's good and solid. Some people wouldn't make their floors as heavy. I made it good and solid. Use good heavy stock because it's light. It's a bit of cedar. It's not heavy to be carting around. Um, yeah, then we have the mesh floor. Not everybody wants mesh floor. Some people like solid floor. I just think a mesh floor for when bees are cleaning house and whatever they take out of the old comb, let it be wax, um, some bees that didn't hatch out or any debris whatsoever can fall out through here, out onto the ground and it's gone. And that includes the little mite varroa when the bees are cleaning, when the varroa falls off, it's gone. Because when it's on a solid floor, it can always crawl back up the side of the, the hive, inside and back into the comb where it can attach itself to a bee again. So that's why I like the mesh floor. I don't cover it up during the winter. Some people put a board under it. Well, where my apiary is, I have, um, I let the weeds, believe it or not, grow good and strong towards the end of the summer. And the apiary gets loads of shelter around the bottoms of the hive. So that keeps all the drafts down. Um, so all we have to do now is to cut this doorway. In the front of this so little guys have some way of going in and out and that is the floor finished well obviously we'll screw down the, the mesh so let's just cut this out So it's five inches long, it's five sixteenths of an inch deep and it doesn't need to be any more than that. It can be but it doesn't need to be and I'll tell you why because when the hives are being attacked by wasps which they are regularly this time of the year that space, that gap, is perfect size for the bees to protect. You could have you could have a hole in the front of your hive. You could have that much bigger, longer, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference, but I like to have it that size. That was always the standard size 
five sixteenths by five inches long and it helps the bees defend our hive against invaders. The little piece that you cut out is perfect for what I do is I put a hole in this end of it. When you want to close it and screw it on there, leave it sitting on. Then in the winter time you can just pop it down and it cuts the hive entrance down to possibly an inch or whatever you want it. And that's all they need in the winter time. Because they're very only coming out for water in the winter. Other than that, they're all snug inside. So let's get this on. And our door just sits in like so. Just run that off. And that is the floor of the hive and I will just pop the brew box sorry about the noise and that's where it goes Some people like to put a flight board, landing board on, but it's just a small board coming out here. You can, bees are quite capable of landing there or there and working their way in. So that's the floor. So let's get the roof done. Okay, so I've put the frame together, same thing as the floor, just two screws in each corner, make them good long screws so they get a good grip. Um, so I'm just in the middle of putting the, the rail on. So I have this, these rails, they are just a bit of three quarter by five eight. Point. There's no 
I don't mind using a bit of pine in here. It's going to be in out of the weather. So what I do is just leave it flush there on the outside. And it's going to go all four sides. So just a couple of screws. or two on here and that stops the, the roof of falling down the whole way and I'll explain that when we have it all together on why we need to keep it up. components for the roof they will be put together like so and I'll just chamfer off that to allow for the slate to run so we'll get that together and go from here right so that is our roof frame with all her beads on and uh, a couple of staples the bit of framing is from uh, an old crate a few staples. Yes. I hate to see nice timber not to waste. So this is how it works. This is our hive and the roof has to sit over the hive like so. Um, I like to have a bit of depth in here because sometimes in the winter, coming into the winter, you might want to feed your bees so you can put a feeder in here and it doesn't need to, it doesn't hit the roof. So you will be putting tiles, slates on like that. So yeah, I'll get that on now and we'll show you how that all works. So this is the crown board of the hive. When the hive is stacked up, this is what goes on the very top. Or when you're wintering the hive, this is what goes on top of the brood box. Now, this is a, a bee escape. It goes in there. So it does. Now, just tighten the screw. So if a bee gets trapped in the roof, when you're putting it back together, they can go in here or back into the hive safely, but they can't come out. Because inside these is um, a little trap, which Allows the bee to, um, let's see, can you see that? It allows the bee to pass, it opens up, 
out through it, but they can't go back. So they're going against the two little prongs. Does that make sense? I have one of them on all my knives. So that goes in there. I have three holes here. What I generally do with that is I cover it. Any block of timber at all. When it's in the hide that's closed up. Cover them over so the bee can't get out. And then if the bee hive you think it's getting very warm, I would generally take that off and put a small bit of mesh over that so it can have air circulation. They get a bit of air through this anyway, but it's nice to have these just in case. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the hive together and show it to you in its finished state. So that's the roof, finished. Um, the slate, I just screwed it down with some cup screws. They're flat on the bottom, so they sit nice and tight down. Uh, put a bit of sealer on them. Put a bit of sealer along the center, and then put a bit of weather tape on top of it. Inside of it, it's like this. This is where it sits, so it can't sits nice and snug. This creates a seal around the top of the hive. So there's room in here to sit a two litre feeder feeding the guys in the winter months. So that is that. So I'm going to put the strips on the inside of the brood box now and I'm going to show you how that's done so just bear with me so now this is a metal strip that goes on here and it's 7 16 of an inch from the top surface And the reason we leave it up off it is because there's a crawl space along the back. So we don't want any bees getting stuck in there. So there's enough space for them to crawl along there. I'm using, there is a bead, a steel runner designed for the beehives. It's no different than these. I use a bit of three, three millimeter plastering um, stop. That's you can buy it in any hardware. It's about three euros for an eight foot lint. So let's just tack that on and we'll see what Now, so if one of those goes on both sides of this and both sides of the other box that we've made. So I'll get them on and we can show you how that works. So, you remember the floor? Five. 
that's our door so obviously that's the front of the hive this is the brood box where the bees live and what's next I don't know whether we're going to have the height here it actually goes that way it can go that way but I like to have it that way so the frames in here I'll just show you that this is a frame that the bees build their comb on for the living it sits along these rails and the reason we use the rails is that the bees stick things together they love just sticking things that they think should be stuck together so when they stick these to the rail it's a lot easier to pop it out when you're doing an inspection but if that was sitting on the timber down there and they glued it you won't be getting it out you will actually break the frame in bits trying to get it out so that's the idea of the rails <coughs> now so that's Brood box on the floor. Then we have a thing called Queen Excluder. Queen Excluder, generally made of plastic or steel. This is a plastic one. I like these ones because they have the bee space just enough for the bees to crawl between them. And the queen can't push her way through these. It's the queen being bigger than the Worker bees, she can't squeeze through here to go up and lay in the honey. So that goes on there. Next we have the super, that's called. It's where the honey frames go. You have 10 honey frames in there. Then we have the crown board, like so, and finally, I'll just make sure that we can see it. We have the roof. And that, my friends, is a commercial size beehive. Floor, brood box, queen excluder, honey super, roof, and crown board inside. So, look, hope you've enjoyed the build. If you want to know anything about it, just ask, make a comment and ask the questions. You'll never know if you don't ask. I put some breeder holes in here, just a little bit of air circulation. Finishing, yeah, might put something on it. Maybe oil it, just anything at all, just to um, get the water run off it. Some people like flat roofs, I prefer the A roof. It gets the water away from the hive on both sides so that's really it guys that is a beehive i hope i've informed you enough to be able to make one for yourselves and if i get a chance and if you want to see it i will make a video of me putting some bees into it so i have a couple of nukes that need to be rehived and um, if you'd like to see that, you leave a comment below. And that's it, guys. There you have it. One cedar commercial beehive, and it is extremely light. Now, when the bees are in it, it won't be that light.
so yeah thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the bees going in there so you get notified first about the, the bell and um anything else we're going to do so roof slip all around it for to carry the roof and seal it around the crown board crown board plywood inner 5 16 by 3 quarter inch slip all the way around both sides the 5 16 is a crucial measurement because it's it's a, a bee space where the bee have to crawl. If it's any bigger, they will put comb in it. So you need to be fairly accurate with your crawl spaces for the bees. Super box, 20 frames will go in here, 10 of them. Queen excluder stops the queen of going up into the honey. So we don't have her laying eggs in the honey. Brood box, which will takes 12 of these, but we only put 11 in. What we do is we put a dummy in the back, so it's easy to pop out and inspect the hive. And the floor, the bee entrance. Which is five inches wide, five sixteenths, enough for a V to get in there. So there you have it. Once again, commercial beehive. The bee spacings are again they're five sixteenths. So when the frame goes in, the frame is flush on the top. You can see that, but there's enough space in here. So if the bee goes in and under the frame, he can get out, or she can get out all along. And that runs that way, rather than that way. It's easy for the bee to climb through when they're coming up. From the frame. Honey box runs the same as the brood box, left to right. Crown board, it has to be escape in it, but in the winter time, I'd pop that out, sit a feeder there with sugar syrup in it. The bees can come up through into the feeder get some food and go back down and that's why I like the A roof because it gives you room to put a two three or a four liter feeder in there as I said these tree holes are generally blocked up with a bit of timber or a bit of mesh depending on the heat that is. and the reason I like my frames to go from left to right or right to left is I like to work from the back of the hive so you're not interfering with the bees escaping from what you're doing and it's warmer when the, when the frames are going from front to back the draft can it's it's a cold way left to right is a warmer way so I say crown board. And again, roof. Thanks guys for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you don't. Ask a question. And come back for more.